guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and that is Kawasaki disease. So let's get started. So what is Kawasaki disease? Kawasaki disease is an illness that causes inflammation, which means swelling and redness in the blood vessels, which include the arteries, veins and capillaries throughout the body. The disease is also known as Kawasaki syndrome or mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome because it also affects the glands that swell during an infection, which are the lymph nodes, the skin and the mucous membranes inside the mouth, nose and throat. The condition most often affects kids younger than five years old and is one of the leading causes of heart disease in kids. So from this definition of Kawasaki disease, we get that it's actually an inflammatory disease which causes the inflammation of the body's blood vessels throughout these patients' bodies. And it's also commonly referred to as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome because it also actually affects the lymph nodes, the mucous membranes, as well as the skin inside these various locations, which include the mouth, nose, and throat. So something very interesting about Kawasaki disease is that it most commonly affects children under the age of five and is actually one of the leading causes of heart disease in kids because it causes this inflammatory process within the body's blood vessels it's definitely going to have a drastic effect on the child's heart but we'll get more into the specifics of this process as the video goes along so now that we know what the basics of kawasaki disease is let's take a closer look at how one can contract the disease so scientists haven't found an exact cause for Kawasaki disease, but it might be linked to genes, viruses, bacteria, and other things in the world around a child, such as chemicals or irritants. The disease is probably not contagious, but sometimes happens in clusters within a community. And kids are more likely to get it in the winter and spring months compared to the fall or autumn and summer months. So a few things that can actually raise a child's risk of developing Kawasaki disease include age. It usually affects children who are five years or younger. Sex. Boys are actually 1.5 times more likely to get it than girls. And ethnicity. Children of Asian descent tend to be more likely to develop Kawasaki disease. So now let's explore some signs and symptoms of Kawasaki disease. So Kawasaki disease, signs and symptoms usually appear in three distinct phases. So the first phase has a fever that is often higher than 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 39 degrees Celsius, and lasts for more than three days. The child will also have extremely red eyes, but without any thick discharge, a rash on the main part of the body and in the genital area, red, dry and cracked lips, and an extremely red swollen tongue and this is usually called strawberry tongue it's got a very specific aspect it's got this very specific aspect which sort of looks like a strawberry with those seeds on the top of the strawberry so it's referred to as strawberry tongue these children may also have swollen red skin on the palms of their hands and on the soles of their feet they will also have swollen lymph nodes in the neck region and perhaps elsewhere and these children will also suffer irritability. So usually those lymph nodes which are inflamed are usually located in the cervical or neck region and are usually around or more than 1.5 centimeters in size. The eyes are usually red but don't usually have a thick discharge. We have the swollen and red strawberry tongue which is also called mucositis and we have the rash on the body which usually has a reddish aspect and may also develop within the genital areas of these kids. The lips are often dry and extremely red and cracked, and these children will also have swelling of their hands and feet. So in the second phase of the disease, we have the peeling of the skin of the hands and the feet, especially the tips of the fingers and toes, often in large sheets. So what actually happens here is that the skin actually breaks and we have the peeling of the skin and it can often come off as really large sheets of skin. These children may also suffer from joint pain. They may have diarrhea, vomiting and abdominal pain. 
So in the third phase of this disease, the signs and symptoms slowly go away unless some severe complications develop. So one of the complications that may develop are actually coronary artery aneurysms. So we see that there are specific dilated portions of the arteries, and these are actually called coronary artery aneurysms, and actually develop due to that underlying inflammation within these various vessels. And it may actually be as long as eight weeks before energy levels can seem normal again in these children. The diagnosis of Kawasaki disease. So Kawasaki disease cannot be diagnosed by a single test or a group of tests. And this is because we are unsure what the exact cause of the disease is. So doctors make the diagnosis after carefully examining the child, observing the signs and symptoms, and eliminating the possibility of other similar diseases, such as scarlet fever, which is a bacterial infection that causes fever, chills, and a sore throat, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, which is a chronic disease that causes joint pain and inflammation, measles, toxic shock syndrome, idiopathic juvenile arthritis, juvenile mercury poisoning, having a medical reaction, or Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, which is a tick-borne illness. So the only way we can actually put the diagnosis of a Kawasaki disease is actually eliminating the possibility of other factors that may have caused the disease. So in addition to the elimination of all possible other diseases, we also have to keep in mind the actual signs and symptoms that the patient presents with. So these patients will have that rash, the redness in their eyes, the cracked dry lips, the inflamed red tongue, swollen lymph nodes in that neck region, the rash even on the genital area, a fever, and as well as the swelling and peeling of skin on the hands and the feet. So these are all signs and symptoms that can point us towards a diagnosis of Kawasaki disease. So additional examinations. So the pediatrician might order additional tests to check how the disease has affected the heart. Because as we said, this is actually one of the most common causes of heart disease in children. So these tests may include an echograph. And an echograph is a painless procedure that uses sound waves to create pictures of the heart and its arteries. And this test may need to be repeated to show how Kawasaki disease has affected the heart over time. Blood tests. So blood tests may be ordered to rule out other diseases. And in Kawasaki disease, there may be an elevated white blood cell count, a low red blood cell count, and an increase in the inflammatory markers, so increased inflammation, which can be proved by a blood test. The doctor might also order a chest x-ray, and here, the chest x-ray creates a black and white image of the heart and lungs and the doctor orders this test to look for signs of heart failure and inflammation. And finally, an electrocardiogram. And the electrocardiogram, which is also known as the ECG, records the electrical activity of the heart. And any irregularities in the ECG may actually indicate that the heart has been affected by Kawasaki disease. So these are all the additional tests that can actually be run in these patients as well. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of Kawasaki disease. So doctors usually treat children with Kawasaki disease by giving them intravenous, which means IV doses of immunoglobulin or IVIG, and high dose aspirin, which is given orally. The aspirin is used to reduce the fever, rash, joint swelling, and pain. It can also help prevent blood clots from forming, while the IVIG reduces the risk of developing coronary artery abnormalities. Other medications such as steroids or infliximab may also be used in children who do not respond to IVIG. And that brings us to the end of this video on Kawasaki disease. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.